generally speaking, prayer is uh, not for an unsaved person. Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. That's right. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you're going to come to God in prayer, you first of all got to believe that he exists. You've got to believe who he is. You have to have a personal relationship with him. Amen. Now, I do believe that God can hear and answer the prayer of an unsaved person if he wants to. God is sovereign. Now, the word sovereign is not in the Bible, but the word sovereign is a good word to describe what God is. When we say God is sovereign, it means God can do whatever he wants, anytime he wants, wherever he wants, using whoever he wants, with whatever. God can do anything he wants. He's the Lord. He's the boss. That's mm. crazy. Interesting. And I've heard testimonies of people that did pray before they were saved, and God answered those prayers, I believe. God can answer the prayer of a lost person if he wants to, and sometimes I do believe he does. Yeah. But as a general rule we're talking about tonight, in a general sense, God does not hear and answer prayers of unsaved people mm -hmm. as a general way, because an unsaved person is not a child of God. That's right. Yeah. Je Jesus, talking to a bunch of unsaved religious people in John 8, 44, pointed to them and said, ye are of your father the devil, mm -hmm. and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Mm. Talking to a bunch of unsaved religious people, he said, your father's the devil. Yeah. We have such so many lies today in the world and in Christianity and Christian down today, and one of them is the you know the universal fatherhood of God and brotherhood of man. We're all brothers. Mm. We're all related to each other. And God, yep. you know, God is the father of everybody. That's a lie straight out of the pit of hell. Right? That's what, yeah, that's now, God true. is the creator of everybody. Yes. God created everyone, but he's not the father of everybody Amen. until they come, that person comes through the Lord Jesus Christ into a personal relationship with God, and then he becomes your father. Amen. We're not all related to each other. We're not all brothers. We're not all going to hold hands and sing, let there be peace on earth and kumbaya, my Lord. We can't do that. I'm the last person. It's not my brother. Yeah, that's right. You're I'm very that. careful who I call brother. So and so, you come to church. And Amen. You know, I'm hey, brother James, how you doing? Brother Brown, how you doing? And we say, but I'm careful who I say that to. If I'm not sure that person is my brother, that's I'm not right. going to call them my brother no, and no. then give them a false you know, sense of security that's that right. I think that they're a Christian. That's good. But prayer is not for sinners. Again, God can if He wants to. You know, it's like if you're a parent. Let's say you're a father. And you're, you got a, you know, some kids, eight, nine, ten year old kids, and you know, your kids come to you and say, Hey, Daddy, can we have five dollars so we can go down to Dairy Queen and get some ice cream or honey nut or yeah. wherever you want to go? Get the good stuff, right? Yeah. Okay, but can we um, just use Dairy Queen for this illustration, though, okay? <laughs> Daddy, can we have five dollars to go down to Dairy Queen and get some ice cream? <laughs> you're, you are the father of those children. It's your job to provide for those children. You feel obligated to. To, to provide for them, you give them that money. Now, let's say some of the neighborhood kids that live on the streets and on the block come to you and say, hey, Daddy, hey, or not Daddy, but hey, Mr. So-and-so, can we have $5 and go with your kids down to Dairy Queen and get that ice cream? Now, those kids are not yours. Right. You're not their father. Now, out of the kindness of your heart, you might give them the, the money to go get the ice cream if you're in a good mood, but you're not under any obligation to provide for them because they're not your children. You see what I mean? God sometimes might answer the prayer of a lost person, but in a general rule, prayer is not for sinners. Mm -hmm. Letter B, now this is an interesting one. This is one that some people may disagree on, but just hear me out before you write me off here. Letter B, prayer is not for salvation. In other words, you do not have to pray a prayer in order to be saved. You do not have to pray a prayer in order to be saved. Now, I have no doubt in my mind, many of you in here tonight, and many people in our churches, there are many people that did pray a prayer at the moment of their salvation. I have no doubt about that. But lest you misunderstand, it is not the prayer that saved you. Amen. You may have said a prayer out loud to help you verbally express what was going on in your heart. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. But it is not the prayer that saves you. It is the, 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 the belief in your heart. It is the repentance and the faith and the belief and the trust, the dependence that you have upon the Lord in your 
heart. I say to you, it is belief. It is receiving the Lord. It is not a prayer. 